Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing New Pokemon Snap for the Nintendo Switch. Now, New Pokemon Snap has released almost 20 years after the original on the N64, and this is a game that fans of the original have been asking for for years. But the question has to be asked, is this a worthy successor to the original, or unfortunately is it just a cheap cash grab? Well, today we'll figure that out. Just before we get to the review, don't forget that if you do like this content, the best way to support the channel is to hit that like button and also subscribe if you aren't already. First of all, for anyone who is totally unfamiliar with the Pokemon Snap franchise, it takes the extremely popular franchise Pokemon and flips it on its head, turning the game ultimately into an on-the-rails FPS shooter. Now, I know that's going to shock quite a few people out there, an FPS shooter, but it is transformed in a very family-friendly way because rather than shooting the Pokemon, you are taking pictures of them and they push this very, very friendly dynamic to its ultimate point. But the core mechanics of the gameplay are very simple. You basically aim with the left joystick, you can zoom in, you can throw fruit, you can also eventually throw what are called Illumina Balls or Illumina Orbs, and obviously the most obvious mechanic of the game, you can take pictures. But don't worry, no one's here for the mechanics. Now the storyline is also a very simple one and it's a pretty much throwaway storyline that is just there to help progress the gameplay. In this game, you're introduced to a new area and a new research professor who is researching what is called the Illumina Phenomenon, which is basically affecting different Pokemon's behavior and also their appearance. He quickly enlists you to help him in completing what's called a Photodex, so basically replacing the traditional Pokedex is rather a Photodex that you have to fill with pictures of Pokemon. Now, just in case you're worried because I'm saying things like very basic mechanics and throwaway storyline, do not worry, I ultimately did think that this is a pretty great game. And I know that I'm ruining the direction of the review a bit, but I just don't want anyone tuning out before we actually get to what makes this game great. And mechanics and storyline isn't at all what this game is about. This game is all about immersiveness. And I would ultimately say that this is actually the first ever Pokemon game that actually makes you feel like you eventually become of a living, breathing, Pokemon world. This game isn't all about the humans, it isn't about catching, it isn't about training the Pokemon, it's about just experiencing the Pokemon actually being Pokemon. And thanks to the technological evolutions that we've had since the original game that came out 20 years ago, it can finally deliver on its promise of immersiveness and it actually becomes almost the perfect evolution of what was set up in the original Pokemon Snap. So now that we have that out of the way, let's look at what exactly about the gameplay makes this such a great game. Now, the first thing they did is they addressed the major problem of the first game, which was the lack of content and the short gameplay time of the original. And they've done this by introducing an extremely enticing and very addictive gameplay loop. Now, if we start with the Pokemon themselves, not only does new Pokemon snap feature way more Pokemons than the original game and Pokemon from pretty much every generation. But because of the star rating system that they've introduced on the different pictures, it's actually like you're multiplying every Pokemon by four. Basically, when you're taking a picture, you have two different type of ratings. The first rating is what's called the star rating, but that actually has nothing to do with the quality of your picture. It has to do what state the Pokemon was in when you took the picture. For example, the one star state could be the Pokemon just walking around. The second star state could be the Pokemon jumping around. The third one, the Pokemon eating an apple. And the fourth one would be generally a special state. What that means is that each Pokemon to complete your photo decks will have to be photographed at least a minimum of four different times. And at the same time, your photograph will also receive a score, which ultimately will be based on whether the Pokemon was centered in the picture, whether you can see other Pokemons in the picture, if the Pokemon is zoomed in and very large in the frame, and so forth and so forth. 
but all this variety in scoring means that you have hours upon hours before you're able to grasp each Pokemon in every different state and get really decent scores for every different type of picture. Now, the second thing they've also addressed was the lack of courses. And once again, they've done this in a very interesting and enticing way. First of all, each course will have a minimum of at least two variations, one being a daytime version, one being a nighttime version, and generally pretty much every course will also have a third special variation. Now, not only are not the same Pokemon present during the daytime as the nighttime, but if we revert to that previous star rating of the pictures, well, basically certain Pokemon will only behave in certain ways, either during the daytime, during the nighttime, or during that special course. But that's not all they've done. They've also added to each separate course what's called a research level, which is based on the scoring of the pictures you've taken during your different travels through a specific course. And to achieve the different research levels, you'll have to play the courses many, many times. But upgrading these research levels will ultimately change the behaviors and even which Pokemon once again will be present in each course. Once again, reverting to that star rating, if you want all the Pokemon in all their star ratings, you'll have to upgrade the research level of pretty much every course because some Pokemon will only behave in certain ways at higher research levels. And what's great about this whole process is it feels very natural because basically it's explained by the more you play the courses, the more the Pokemon are used to seeing you so they start to behave more naturally because they're used to your presence, which ultimately has a very strong resonance with reality. And all that really helps contribute to what I said earlier, the immersiveness of the experience. The more you see and you play through this world, the more you feel like you're actually becoming a part of it and that the Pokemon are starting to accept you as one of their own. Now with all these great things, there are however a couple of points that did disappoint me slightly overall and I'd like to go over them quickly. And the first thing is the voiceovers. I got really excited because when you start up the game, the first screen you see has you choose what language you'd like the voiceovers in, English, Japanese, or no voiceovers whatsoever. So I maybe thought we'd finally get our first fully voiced Pokemon game, and overall it would perfectly fit with the Pokemon Snap franchise, being that there isn't that much dialogue. But unfortunately, that is not what we got. Basically, the voiceovers are one or two words at a time, things like Thank you. Let's go. What's next? That's pretty much all you're getting. And the rest of the dialogue you have to read for yourself on the screen. Not only that, but they seem to be have been recorded at a very low level. You have to push your sound effects volume all the way up and turn your TV volume all the way up to properly understand the voiceovers. But overall, it's just a minor disappointment. Now the second point, however, is maybe the one that bugged me the most. And that is the fact that after each run, you can only submit one picture per Pokemon. Because during certain runs, you'll be taking many pictures of the same Pokemon. Sometimes you'll even be taking the same Pokemon in one or two different states. But at the end of the stage, you can only get credit for one of those pictures, meaning you'll maybe have to take that exact same picture in a separate run. It turns out to be a very feel bad mechanic. Look, it happened to me many times and it actually happened to me just before recording this video. You'll take two pictures of the very same Pokemon, sometimes even a picture of the same Pokemon in a state that you already own, but with a picture of a much higher quality. You get to the end of the run and you have to choose. Do you want to get the higher score on the picture you already own or do you want to get credit for that new state? Or you'll take, as I said earlier, the same Pokemon in two or three different states and you'll just have to do the same run again and take the exact same pictures a second time. It's an unneeded feel bad mechanic. Now, I understand why they put it in the game. Once again, it was a way to prolong the gameplay to make sure that you wouldn't be able to do one run and get all the states of a Pokemon. But that's already dealt with with the daytime nighttime cycle and the different research levels. This is the only mechanic in my opinion that feels like it really wasn't needed and it also feels unnatural. It just basically feels like a forced mechanic to prolong the gameplay. Now there is a third point I want to bring up, but who knows, it might actually be resolved later on. And that is the fact that currently in the game, there are no presence of evolution moments. 
What I really loved in the original Pokemon Snap, and if you played the original, you'll know about this, at different moments you could actually have Pokemon evolve in front of your eyes. Unfortunately, so far in my gameplay and from what I've seen online, other people's gameplay, no one has become across a Pokemon actually evolving in the wild in front of you. You do have Pokemon evolutions in the game, but you never actually see the process of a Pokemon evolving. And that was something that I really loved from the original. Overall, these are only slight disappointments. And the whole package you're getting is actually quite, quite impressive. Now we get to the rating on this game. And if this is the first video of mine that you're watching, I don't give a numerical score. I give an overall statement on whether I think you should be purchasing the game or not. If you want to see what all those different statements are, you can check out the description of the video down below. They're all down there. Also, I'm giving this rating based on the assumption that this is generally not going to be your first ever exposure to the Pokemon world. So either you've played the other games, maybe you've watched the anime, you've played the card game, but generally already have a general understanding of the Pokemon world and the characters within it. Because for someone who this would be the first ever exposure to the Pokemon world, I'm not sure quite to what point you'll relate to the immersiveness of this game. Now my rating for new Pokemon Snap is going to be a definite pickup. If you're a fan of the Pokemon franchise, you most likely will not be disappointed with what you're getting in this package. And even myself who played the original Pokemon Snap but wasn't the biggest fan of that peculiar game, actually I'm pretty much addicted now to Pokemon Snap and I'm going to be playing regularly over the next couple of weeks till I get all, all, all of those star ratings. Now we could always say that this being a spin-off and not the main series, I would have loved to see a few dollars off of the sale price rather than having that full first party sale price. But you know what? The quality and the polish of the game is there so it can be forgiven being a full priced release. That is my review of new Pokemon Snap. Now I wanna hear from all of you. Do you agree with my review? Have you picked up the game? And if you ever find any of those evolution moments, if they are in the game, please let me know in the comments down below. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, don't forget that if you did like this content and you want to see more, please hit the like button. It is really the best way to support the channel. Also, subscribe if you aren't already. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when all my future videos come out. As usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.